Hello, this is Harry. In this video, we will watch a Russian version of Terra Nova. The background of the story was set five years after the film was released. It was the year 2013 that we have already passed. The death penalty was abolished globally while the number of criminals kept rising. Prisons were overcrowded to detain serious criminals. To solve this problem, some scientists planned an experiment. They selected 206 serious prisoners who had been imprisoned for life and exiled them to a desert island. The main character, Zhilin was a highly educated pilot. Because his wife and children died in an air crash, he became furious. And he was sentenced to life imprisonment for killing the other six members. Before Zhilin's roommate, Sipper was imprisoned he was a proud man with a double degree in social medicine. 22 people were sentenced to life due to curiosity. Zhilin was righteous and did not do any evil, and was highly respected by other prisoners. Sipper was a leader, he was always chattering. On the way to the desert island, two groups of prisoners from different prisons hated each other. Zhilin was headed by the ruthless man Tolia. The other gang leader was the beast. One mountain cannot contain two tigers, both of them regarded power as the way to survive. The first confrontation took place across the iron fence. Out of control, the prison guards fired warning shots to stop the fight. After arriving at the island, all the prisoners were handcuffed with numbers. The experiment would be in a cycle of three months. During this period, the prisoners were the residents of the island. No prison guards, no restrictions, complete freedom. They were also provided with various tools and food. The military would only use satellite surveillance to prevent prisoners from escaping. The prisoners could row to a distance on the sea and press the red button and speak their needs. Finally, the military threw the handcuffed key on the beach and left. For a while, the prisoners went crazy and fought for the keys. Only Zhilin stayed away from the crowd, watching all this quietly. However, the non-relating group's fighting would be worse than the organized gangs. The gang members moved close to each other to form a wall letting the other men who unfastened the handcuffs hurry to take the weapon. After the race, many prisoners died on the spot. The gang completely controlled the situation and kept the prisoners under control. Tolia wanted to kill the beast. The beast ordered his men to kill these prisoners to save the resources on the island. But the gang only had dozens of people. The remaining 100 prisoners were forced to a dead end and immediately launched a rebellion. Zhilin took the lead in throwing stones to attack, and the prisoners immediately formed a battle line. They took advantage of the outweighed number to defeat the opponent steadily. In the chaos, the beast and the old man were beaten to death. There was a gang member who fled in a small boat ahead of time. They destroyed the communication boy and cut off the life on the island. But halfway out of the island, they were buried in the culminating waves. The rest of the men were more harmonious. But this was only the temporary peace. The kingship changed, the power-hungry Tolly would establish a new regime and became the next tyrant. Zhilin knew that human nature was sinister, so he only took some food and tools and left alone. He walked into the desolate stone mountain and fell asleep on the ground. When he woke up, a group of mice almost ate up the food. Soon, Zhilin was facing the situation of running out of food. He had to hunt the animal to fill his stomach. After that, Sipper found Zhilin while smelling the scent. Sipper said that the military put countless mice in the supplies. Overnight, almost all food was eaten. Even some supplies like sleeping bags were also not destroyed. These men could do anything when they were hungry. In order to survive, the prisoners even started to cannibalize each other. Sipper couldn't stand this and escaped decisively. So, the two who broke away from the new society and lived based on fish. One day, Zhilin spotted a seaplane that had a minor crash. If it got repaired, it should be able to take off. But now he couldn't even eat well, and he had no energy to do these strenuous things. To make matters worse, the winter was approaching and the weather was getting colder. Zhilin and Sipper had lived here for two months. Before they starved to death, they could be frozen to death. Desperate, the two decided to risk stealing coal. This was their only way to survive. At this time, the power of Tolia was increasingly consolidated. He enslaved other prisoners with a group of capable powerhouses the rulers wore red. The rest of the people turned their clothes in blue. The rulers had weapons and various entertainment. They even married inflatable dolls. The remaining food was distributed by Tolia's men, and the slaves could only be regarded as lambs to be slaughtered. In order not to let these people die, Tolia also designed a death game. He divided the blue men into two areas according to their strength. The first group was responsible for cooking, and the second was responsible for providing ingredients. When the ruler gave an order, the people in the second group must run back to the house immediately. The slowest one would become everyone's food. The weak and the strong had become literal here. Here, the two people who stole coal were in crisis because of the cold. They thought about stealing and ran away, but their bodies didn't respond and couldn't help but approach the fire to keep warm. They fell asleep without knowing it. After a while, red men escorted the blue man to cook here. The two sleeping men were captured on the spot. A fat man recognized Zhilin and advised Tolia not to be ungrateful. Zhilin was kind to them, but Tolia thought that Zhilin could leave the crowd and live alone for two months like that. He must be a dangerous and cunning man, so he resolutely put the two in the second group as food. The fat man was very angry and started fighting. 
The white hair and the big beard who had a good relationship with Zhilin were about to help but they ended up being stopped by Tolia. The poor fat man was beaten, but he entered the second group with Zhilin. On the first day, Zhilin was forced to participate in the game. Fortunately, Sipper pulled him away and escaped death. Because of Zhilin's previous benevolence, justice and courage, he had accumulated a lot of prestige. Many people here respected him and were willing to listen to his words. Zhilin called on everyone to stop playing this game with Tolia. If they wanted to survive, you had to fix the communication slip and ask the military for help. They started to see hope and no longer have to wait for death. The next day, Zhilin led everyone to stop the game. He negotiated with Tolia. Zhilin said he knew a plane in good condition. As long as Tolia agreed to take someone to repair the communication slip to ask for food, he could fix the plane and let Tolia and everyone escape from the island. Tolia understood that these people had been dominated by the hope of survival. If he didn't agree with Zhilin's request, the order he worked so hard would fall apart immediately. In order to dissolve this will, Tolia would do everything. He put a small boat for Zhilin. Among the rulers in red, there was a mechanic who slept in Zhilin's upper bunk. So he followed Zhilin without hesitation. When Zhilin left, the fat guy was immediately killed. The fearful people had long lost the courage to resist. No one dared to come out an enemy with Tolia. Done killing, Tolia once again shouted the slogan of the game. Everyone immediately returned to the madness of the past and ran into the room desperately. On the sea, the communication slip was severely damaged. There was no replacement of parts, and there was nothing they could do. On the way back, Zhilin and the mechanic reached a consensus and lied to everyone. The military agreed to bring food and everyone would be saved. The mechanic should also agree to repair the plane Zhilin found and fled away together. Zhilin planned to build a big cabin near the airplane. At that time, everyone could escape from the island. Of course, Tolia would not let Zhilin win these people's hearts. Unexpectedly, the mechanic killed Tolia first. White hair and big beard immediately lost their legs. In the end, the power fell into the hands of Zhilin. Zhilin lied to the people that the food would be delivered in 25 days. Now everyone was determined not to cannibalize each other. They must work together to wait for support. Later, Zhilin evenly distributed the leftover food and mobilized people to dismantle the plane. They transported it to the newly built hidden hangar for assembly and repair. After the three-month period expired, the scientists and the army really came. At this point, there were 87 people left on the island. Except for food, Zhilin also asked the scientists for a generator and a large amount of gasoline. He lied that they needed to survive. In the hidden hangar, Zhilin and the mechanic finally smashed up this old-fashioned seaplane. But soon, more than 100 American prisoners were sent to the island. The difference was that there was only one boss in this group. Under the command of the boss, the prisoners untied the handcuffs in an orderly manner. Zhilin tried to shake hands with the bald boss to make peace. But the bald guy was also a ruthless person who loved power. He believed that if he wanted to dominate this island, the original residents must be enslaved by violence. With the bald guy head on Zhilin, the two sides immediately began fighting. A life and death war for survival began. However, the prisoners on the island were baptized before. They were used to helping each other to kill the enemy. And the new prisoners would only fight each other. If this continued, victory would belong to Zhilin's faction. But unexpectedly, seeing the situation out of control, the scientists immediately ordered the indiscriminate shooting of all prisoners. In the end, only Zhilin, the mechanic, White Hair, and Sipa survived. They escaped the army's search and were ready to use the repaired plane to escape the island. However, Sipa had already lost hope for the chaotic society outside. Heaven was long gone, he resolutely chose to fall into hell. On the way, the plane encountered the army ship. The bullet came from the tail, and the mechanic and White Hair guy were killed on the spot. Among hundreds of people, only Zhilin survived. He drove the plane over the mountains and headed into the distance. Well, this video ends here. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, see you next time.